Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Thursday. It's October 7th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and I, saw, I thought I would start by giving you another look at our daily chart here. Uh, early this morning, we were trading way up here outside this trend line, making it look like we were going to get a convincing close outside, and maybe this channel was going to come to an end, but you can see we closed right back inside that. So it looks like the channel is valid and still in play at this point. Doesn't mean we can't push on out of there tomorrow and make a close outside. But at this point, I would say this channel is still valid and still in play. So we may still be moving towards this measured move. We'll see what tomorrow brings. But it was a fairly interesting day because it was a very strong move up during the overnight that continued early into the day, uh, early into the early morning trading hours. And then by late morning, we were already backing off of that. So going sideways pretty much after mid morning. So, and then late in the evening, uh, later towards the afternoon, we started selling off a little bit and we closed right inside that trend line. That stuff doesn't happen by accident. Uh, you know, you can look at my charts, go back as far as you can see, and you can see this stuff over and over. Same thing happened right here. Of course, that's the two swings I used to draw it. So I had this line here long before we ever even bounced here. And so that doesn't happen by accident. That tells you that this line is valid and it's a good chance we're, we could turn down now. So anyway, the two tiered channel appears to be very valid. We still might be working towards a measured move down. We could be turning over and starting a new trend down. I'm not ready to say that yet. I still think there's room for this market to go higher. Unless something crazy comes up in the next couple of months, I think we're going higher before it's over. But that doesn't mean we can't go lower. It doesn't mean I'm right either. So I'm just telling you, based on what I've seen here and how I've seen the market operate in the past, uh, I would be shocked if we don't at least make another test of that high before any kind of serious sell-off happens. So... Anyway, that's a look at the uh, daily on the bands. We're right at the midline. Here's your midline. And the, the midline on the bands, it's based on a 21 bar midline, just pretty much like anything else that we use. So um, we're just trading at the average right now. What we have over the, uh, that's the average price over the last past 21 bars. So we're right at that average. Anyway, I'm going to flip over to the other chart and we'll go through the trades. Okay, here's a high level look at today's chart. You can see this very strong trend we had going up early. We had the break. We tried to make a new high and couldn't. It just rolled over. So uh, that doesn't happen very often. Generally, you're going to trend this strong. You're going to probably make a new high. We, we did retest it here, but this resistance was just too much and eventually the support of this little channel we were in, this yellow channel, gave way, and it was off to the race. We made a measured move down, as you can see, and bounced in there before making another leg down and then bouncing yet again. And looks like we're on the process of trying to make, and we were on the process of trying to make another leg down of both of these, which if you, so far we hadn't made it, doesn't mean we won't, but if we don't, it's a good chance it rallies stronger. When you don't meet your targets like that, generally you'll move further in the other direction once the once prices start trending in the opposite direction. But there's a high level look at it. We'll back out and go through the trades and uh, take it from there. So let me zoom in. You had to be a little patient this morning, but if you were, it paid off. And this is what I'm talking about. When you get a strong trend, although this doesn't look this strong at that point, uh, I still don't see anything I really like to the short side here. So, but when you get a strong trend, don't try selling these corrections. Just wait till prices come back to and reset and then take off again. That's the safer way to trade it. Um, you might have taken this short if you had a better signal bar up here, but generally you're better off to wait on a lower high and you just don't get one. You're way down here and you don't want to be going short way down here. So you don't really get a chance to trade that. This one was tempting here, but there wasn't enough room back to the highs and you don't know that you're going to push through there before it fails. 
So there just weren't any trades. Seven o'clock came right in this congestion area, small range. Of course, you had the failed breakout the low side, then the failed breakout the side, then we trended lower back to the key entry point, the trend line. We bounced right at it, made a higher low here, which uh, this was, you had this set up first, but then you make this equal low, and then you get this huge bearish bar. That's hard to ignore. Um, you may, you probably want to take that trade because you may not get this failed second entry short here. I've seen a lot of times when it's this bullish, it just takes on off, especially when it's right off a key entry point. But in this case, it does give us the failure. So if you didn't enter here, by all means enter here. And this actually broke lower, traded, went up. Um, I'm pretty sure this broke out the low side first and then turned up. This was a great setup. And if you catch this one trade, you're probably off to the races here. If you, depending on how you played it, you probably get a, a runner on it. Um, and of course, we run straight up to the other side of the channel and turn down. And again, you got to be careful going short. I marked one here because that trend's obvious by this point. It's a second entry short. Sets off right off the key entry point. It's a lower high. Uh, a lot of reasons, and we're not back to the trend line. So you may take that trade. I still marked it green just because it's a it's a obvious uptrend, and you just got to be careful shorting those. Uh, you know, at least here, you're not trying to pick a top. I definitely wouldn't take any of these others because you'll get burned. And here you've at least got a proven trend and it's right off the key entry point. It's a second entry short. It's below the EMA. It's a very great signal bar. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to like that trade. So I at least marked it green. But if you're just patient, in a few minutes we bounce off the key entry point again. You get a first entry. I think it's too dangerous to enter on the first entry because it could tick up and come back. Uh to try to retest this low. But when it bounces off right here off that key entry point again, um, it's a failed second entry short. Ah, it's a very, you, your entry is one tick above this bar, but your signal bar, your safety stop has to go below this bar, which is your signal bar. So that's technically where your stop goes, but your entry would be one tick above this bar to the right, because that's where the failure occurred. And that's a quick, easy trade. No two ways about it. And now we're just too far away from the EMA. We run up here. Um, it looks like I've got this a little flat. It looks like you uh, get a closeout. It, it, it comes close to getting a close outside here, but you definitely get a convincing close outside here, a new high, and then it backs off. Uh, it does bounce. On, it's just a first entry. There's a high or low here, but you're right into the highs, and you there's a failure here, but again, you got to go long right at the highs. And I just think it's too dangerous. And you can see it's not long before we can't get higher any longer. And we never get back up to these highs. So if you got long up here, you might have got a chance to get out at break even or with just a very small loss here. Um, actually, we do come back one more time. So you, you gave you another chance to get out. But if you didn't get out, which you probably didn't make your scalp on any of these, if you got long up in here, you might have got a chance to get out with a, a very small loss or whatever. But I don't think I would have ridden that out way down here to try to get back out here. So your your idea is you got to get back out quickly, and you don't ever get that opportunity. By you know you can't ride this out because what if it does just like it did here and goes lower, and then you take a you know, I hear about people all the time blowing their account. Well, if you follow the rules and put your safety stop below the signal bar, then you can't blow account out because you're going to get stopped out when you're wrong. And sometimes you're going to be right about the direction, but your timing's off and your entry's wrong, and you still get stopped out. And it's frustrating, I know, to watch it go where you think it is, but you can't take a chance that this right here happens to you. Because you can see where prices are now and there's doesn't like there's any chance they're coming back and if the trend if the trend line i showed you on the daily charts correct we're probably not coming back for a while so don't risk it but anyway i just don't see any real chances to go short or long in here and then we're way down here this is very tempting on this breakout um 
because you know it's probably going to fail. It's the first break of this blue channel, which is probably going to get a, at least get a retest attempt, even if it doesn't make one. Um, you're better to wait on the high or low here, but you don't get one. You can't go long right into that EMA. But if you wait just a minute, it it closes up here a couple of bars and comes back and tests the support again and holds. That's a failed second entry short. Normally, I'd say you need to be above the EMA, but this is a range. And you can clearly see we tested that support one, two, three times, and it held and gives you a fairly bullish bar on a failed second entry short. And you can see when it broke higher, it rockets up real quick. That was another quick, easy move. Uh, and you get a runner on this. And you can ride this all the way to the top. So if you catch a runner there, just on that one trade, you're looking at six, six points. And that's where I'd look to exit, right into that resistance. At least I'd start putting my stop below these bars each time. At the very minimum. But I'd probably have my target just in front of that, those highs. Specifically the closest. So I'd be right in there. And you get out with just, um, you know, a tick to spare. So. And, of course, where does it do? It runs right back down. I marked this one green because you could argue it's a triple test. But there's a lot of time in there, probably more than I like. Uh, so I'd probably want a lower high here. But but there's reasons to like that trade. And you may take it. And it turns out to be a great one. And then what does it do? It goes the other side and bounces. Great signal bar. Just take that trade. You do have a little trend channel working down. But the trend has bounced so many times that I'm a, I'm probably going to take that trade at least back as long as you got room back to the EMA. And of course it it does run back down and make a new low and then bounces again. But now you got a triple test. Um, nice signal bar. It it looks a little congested, but it went a little bit lower. If it breaks higher, you'll probably get a scalp. And it comes back and tests it again. Well, every time it's come back, so far it's been good for a scalp. Well, guess what? It's good for a scalp this time too. So it's just kind of like a little, it's just, it is starting to make lower highs each time. So, uh, but notice when it comes back again, it doesn't give you a chance. It breaks through this time. Notice this, you got a, a new high here and you try to go higher once. You break through, you pull back and test that, but that's a failed second entry long too. And look how bearish that is. You got to go short right at the low of that move, but I like that entry because it's probably going to drop real quick. And it does, and you actually get an overshoot. Um, it looks like it could be, since it's the only time we really pushed over there, my guess is it looks more like an overshoot to me. Uh, which would lead to a break of the trend line pretty quickly, which it does on the other side. And this is a little too congested to be trading. However, you do get a little trap up here. You make that high, try to go higher, it breaks higher and turns. And look how bearish that is. Um, and notice too that when we dropped, this line right here is the measured move of this channel. And that's where we found support. And that's the only reason I made this green. If I had been a measured move with there, right there, I would have probably made that red. But that measured move worries me because you see how it does push lower and try to come back. And then it comes back and tests it again before it takes off. But that bar is just so bearish. Um, and really, we've only got one leg down, so we're probably going to get a measured leg, which you can see that's exactly what we got. But we actually pushed a little lower before it bounced, though. Um, and so we're running on down and then you got your break of this. And this is actually two separate moves. You got a move here and notice this is a little two legged correction. That's probably going to be the center of your pattern and you're probably going to get another setup. You could have drawn it up here and probably got the same pattern, but I think this is a little spike and channel down because that's just so bearish right there. And it tends to fit better here. You get a break and you low and then we reverse. There is a bigger pattern here, but you probably wouldn't have seen that yet. So no problem with this reversal here. Uh, notice you get a first entry, you push through the MA, you pull back, you get a second entry. It fails real quickly. Take that trade. Because all it really does is come back up. And test that 
support is resistance again and when it holds again it's going lower again and this time I waited on a lower high and it's a little bit congested the only way I would trade this is when it broke higher if you want to use a trade it like an engulfing bar and go short one tick below that because you got a lot of room back to the EMA here you don't you got to be a little bit wiser about it you may still take that trade because it does look like it confirms the trend line there but it's really late in the day too so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that one green it's a little aggressive but I did want to talk about this trade because the trader sent me this and he said hey there's a perfect second entry short and there's you know I'm looking for a retest of the low but he didn't have his channel drawn correctly. Um, I, I want to say he drew it like this. And I'm going to color that just so it's real easy to see. We'll color it red. But notice something here. He's got one touch here and a temporary touch here. He's got no touches down. Well, you could argue he's got one touch that doesn't fit properly. That is not correct. When you draw one of these lines, notice how prices turn down off that side. They turn up off this side and they turn back down off that side. You finally get an overshoot, but notice it. They turn up and down inside your channel. And if they're not, here, you're just kind of chopping down the middle of the channel. It's not touching either side. So you know that's not correct. It's like this one right here. You're going from line to line here. You got another overshoot and a break. So that kind of gives you a warning that you get a break coming. And then it's not long before we're going the other direction again. So when you draw these things, just like your blue one here, notice you're on the low side. You keep working up till you hit the high side. Then you come back to the low side, then back to the high side, back to the low side. And if this thing's bouncing and your lines look like something like that, let's just say you drew it like that and you're not touching these lines and it's not correct. You, and you should know that. Your lines give you feedback and tell you if you got it right. So, um, yeah, if, you, if you're trading this red one, so now he's looking for a retest of the low, even if he was looking for a retail, let's assume his red channel is right. The fact that it went back, that you went back through the EMA and you got an inside bar here. Yeah, it's a very tiny bar, but I don't think his looked like that. Uh, it's only four ticks. I can't remember exactly what his chart looked like. Okay, I just decided to open his chart. Well, here's, yeah, his chart looks pretty much like mine, but this is why his, his read is off look he's he's not touching any of these bars these bars don't just turn down there for no reason there's some kind of resistance down through there so that tells you your trend line needs to be much lower and steeper and there's your break your move to a new low and then you're reversing out of there uh, it does come back and start another trend down but that happens that's the way either what it is there's a bigger channel there and this is that green channel so Look at the difference in his chart. And then now look at, now here's my chart. And so you can see his, that red is pretty much how he had his drone, but that's not correct. This is what it looks like. And you could have even drawn it up here and drawn it down. You'd probably got the same. I still think it's a spike in channel, but even if you drew it like that, still looks pretty still looks fine i mean if you do it like that you're okay so uh, you still get your break right at the same spot a move to a new low and then now you're expecting i like that reversal right there because this is probably where you're coming back to test this resistance and if it gets through there it's probably coming back it'll test this high and then it'll probably come back and test this area up here but it looks like in the end there's a trend line up here and we turn down off that trend line like so. And there it is. 
And so even, let's assume that, I mean, you've got a trend line working up here too. So uh, this would be the first break, even if you're correct. But the fact that that went through the EMA and closed up here tells you, hey, something's changed. Look how long it's been since we've been above the EMA. Doesn't mean that the trend's over, but it means scrutinize this very closely. And if you really look at it, you've got two measured legs down. And so that's probably going to be the end of the move. And you can see leg one, and then you get this little two-legged correction in the middle that kind of looks like congestion. And then you get your next leg down that kind of overshoots it even after that. So it's probably going to get a pretty good rally back up. And then it finds this trend line up here. And we're off to the races. And you can see we've hit that trend line again. And this wasn't even there when I started this video, I don't think. So um, that's come back and formed since that point. So, and that doesn't happen by accident. It tells you the line is right. Uh, one thing I do see here is that we didn't, notice how we're having trouble getting back down to these lows again. That's telling you something. And also something that I didn't talk about, this really dark line, my guess is that's going to be our target to the downside. And the reason I say that is because that's that's where we closed yesterday. So when we open at 8.30 today, we're way up here. So there's a gap between here and here. You don't see it on this chart because this trades 24 hours. But if you took this gray part out, the market would have closed right here yesterday. Or that would have been the high yesterday, not the close. I'm sorry. Don't let me confuse you. That was the highest point we made yesterday. Well, this was the lowest point we made today after 8.30. So there's no trading in between there. And prices don't like those gaps. So they're probably going to try to fill that gap. Will they fill it today or tomorrow? I don't know. But that's they don't last very long. The market will try. It may not be able to, but it's trying right now. I guarantee that's its target, its first tier target. And if it gets through that, it'll probably test this other close from yesterday. If it gets through that, it'll have its next target. But these closes and opens, just like here, notice we find some support at that open. It was testing that. Now, if it gets through there, it's probably going to test this next one. So just keep that in mind. But uh, you have to, you know, your, your trend lines don't have to be perfect. But the whole idea of these lines are support and resistance. So if they're not holding prices neatly, then your trend lines are not right. And I mean, Look how we're turning off those lines each time. Then we get a little overshoot, then it leads to a break, two legs down, and then it reverses. That's what a trend, that's what a good channel looks like. Look how the midline's coming into play in there every time. That that's more proof that hey, that channel is correct right there. But now if you come in here and you draw your channel like this. Why is it turning up down here, not coming back to the trend line? It's telling you something's not correct. But, you know, usually I see them much worse than that. I'll see something like this right here. And that's how they'll have their channel. And you're not going to get your break and your retest and all that if your channel's too liberal. That's, that's too liberal. It's usually off the high and then the next swing using the bodies and you can look at that I believe that to be correct you get an overshoot which leads to a break two legs down and now you're going the other way and if you draw this the other way start at your low and work off that first swing and there's that channel and it's working up got a close outside new high and now it's working lower what do you know this stuff works for the most part, but you have to draw your trend channels correctly. If you're not, you're just going to be lost. And it's not this, it's not that difficult. Yeah, it's a skill and you got to hone it and you got to practice and you got to work on it and you got to get the big thing is you got to watch prices print every day and then you got to go study the chart and but if you if you can't draw these trend lines, go get out as many blank charts as you can and start drawing the trend channels. And trying to find them and looking for the break and the new low and all that stuff. 
or the or the trend up, the break in the new high. And eventually you'll get you'll train your eye to see it and how to draw it. But people get all hung up on these trend lines and uh, you know saying it's all it's too subjective. It's not subjective at all. <laughs> not in any way. Every now and then it's hard to find a trend, but for the most part, 90, 9 out of 10 of them are pretty simple to find if you're skilled enough to know how to do it. So it's not subjective. No matter what anybody tells you, finding trend lines is not subjective. I've heard that so many times I just want to, you know, just want to gag. I heard that so many times, and it's BS. So don't let people tell you that. It's people that don't know how to do it that will tell you that because they can't do it or they don't understand it. But if you go back and look at my charts, I show this every day over and over and over. It's not subjective. So anyway, I didn't mean to get off on that tangent, but it's a pretty important one. And, th and this trader's, don't get me wrong, I don't want this trader that I've showed his chart because he, he didn't have anything to do with this second part of me uh, going, you know, kind of lecturing about the trend lines. He's just new and learning how to do it, and he's just not that good at it yet. He's getting better, but he's not there yet. So, so don't think I was talking to that trader because that's not who I'm talking to. I'm just talking to people in general, especially the ones that get all hung up about these trend lines and try to tell me they're subjective and don't work and you can draw them a hundred million ways. And, uh, you know, if you know what you're doing, like I said, every now and then you can find a trend line that you could look at a couple of different ways. But for the most part, if you start at the high and work off the first swing and use the closes or the, or the, the, the bodies, not necessarily the closes, but the bodies, because I've got a bad out about saying the closes because it, it it might be at the it's the bodies because it might be the open or the like right in here we're coming off the open or the closes so we're really just trying to come off the bodies because it could be green or red and that could be open or close so the key is you start with a low point and you come off the closes on the next swing and that's how you draw them 99 percent of the time. Occasionally, you'll get one that's a little more difficult. It happens. But most days, it's very clear-cut and very easy. And when you get the ones that are a little harder, with time, you'll get better at those because you'll get more experience at it. But, yeah, I get I, I hear it so often. You know, it's too subjective. You know, you could draw it like this. You could draw it like, well, if you draw it like the way you're drawing it, it's probably wrong. And I can show you where I've drawn these every day for years, and they work. And I've gotten better at it myself. Mine used to not be. If you go back maybe eight or ten years ago, my channels wouldn't be as tight as they are now. I didn't. I, I le I'm le I've learned as I've gotten better at it. You start drawing these every day, you'll get really good at it. But you got to practice. It's like anything. You got to practice. If you want to be a world class piano player. You don't come in and sit down and peck around on the keyboard for an hour and get up and leave and and that's it, or even a couple hours. You have to practice every day and study, and it, it, it takes years and years to be world class at, for most people. And trading's no different. It's going to take most of you a while to become a really skilled chart reader and be able to draw your trends and channels and all that stuff. So, and, and when you get them on there, it shows you a totally different picture. If you don't have these on there, this looks totally different. Just, just an example. If I take the, everything off here, that, that chart looks totally different. I can see these lines with just in a blink, just glancing at it. I don't even really have to draw a lot of them because I've seen them. I've done it so much. But to the, the average trader, this is just bars on a chart. They don't, don't mean anything to them. But when you learn to look, if once you learn the rules of pretty much that price action follows, which I'm teaching you, and then you learn to draw these lines, then it all kind of falls in place. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to make money tomorrow because you still got a lot to learn and you still got a lot of experience to, to, to get under your belt, but at least you're on the right track. So anyway, that's 30 minutes worth. That's going to wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up for the week. No chart lessons on Friday. So we'll be back Monday. Hope everybody has a great weekend. I hope you had a great trading day, uh, trading week. Hope tomorrow's a great trading day for you as well. Maybe we'll get another big trend in one direction or the other. Love those days. We've had a bunch of them lately, either up or down, one of the two. And just remember, 
even if we continue in this bear move to the downside, when you're going to have rallies like this, even in a very strong bear trend, you're going to get strong rallies like this because people get spooked quickly on bear trends and they're afraid they're going to miss the bottom. And you get a lot of short covering and stuff and people start taking profits and then, man, the thing just rockets up. And then eventually it runs out of steam, it rolls over, and the trend to the downside's back just as bearish as it was before. And so that could happen here, especially after what I showed you on the daily chart. So we, we're probably not done to the downside. Uh, tomorrow we'll probably tell the tale. If we continue higher tomorrow, maybe we'll get a close outside. But we, you know, there's still a good chance we could get a retest of the lows after that move down. I still think we need a retest of the highs too, though. So I don't think the trend to the upside is over, but I'm not convinced it's time to expect that prices are going higher to test that yet. I think we still got some room to the downside. We'll just have to see what tomorrow brings and what the chart looks like. As of today, it looks like we're probably still maybe going lower. Doesn't mean we will, but that's just kind of what it's looking like. So uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. We'll be back again Monday. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.